Welcome to our new session. In this session, we will be looking at the chronological order of activities. We will see what activities we obtained after decomposing the project using the word breakdown structure. We will create a precedence diagram and we look into predecessors and successors. Let's have a look at the list of activities that we obtained at the end of the decomposition of the project, what we obtained at the bottom of the work breakdown structure. When we look deeper into the work breakdown structure, we see that all these activities are ordered in a logical order. In fact, the decomposition of the project is a kind of cutting the project into pieces. All those activities now have to be assembled, combined in a specific way to create the final deliverable, which is the project. That's why I talked about this as a cut and paste operation. The cutting part is the decomposition of the project, while the paste part is the ordering of the activities in the precedence diagramming to build the project. As a rule, decomposition ends when the activities that we obtain at the bottom of the WBS are between 8 to 80 hours. It means between 1 to 10 days or 1 day and two work weeks. When we create a precedence diagram, we have to follow certain principles. The goal is to order all these activities in a chronological order, an order that we can execute without problems. Let's consider a simple example of planting a tree. The first step before we can plant a tree is digging a hole. We need a hole to put the new tree in. Step two, we will plant the tree. So once the hole is finished, we plant the tree. And now the third step, we fill up the hole, which means that our little project is finished. Step one, we call the predecessor, the predecessor of step two. Step two is the successor of step one, but it's also the predecessor of step three. And finally, step three ends the project and there are no more successors. Here we can see that the project can start with activities that have no predecessor. Step one has no predecessor. And the project ends when there are no more successors. Step three, when we fill the hole, all the work is done and the project is finished. There are no more successors. Let's look a little bit closer to predecessors and successors. Let's consider two activities, A and B, that have no predecessors. It means that A and B can be at the beginning of the project. On the other hand, we can identify activities that have no successors, like tasks G and F. We also have intermediate activities like C, D, and E, and these activities have predecessors and successors. What we now have to do is to link those different activities by looking at the precedences of the tasks C, D, E, G, and F. Let's look at the relation between A, C, and D. From our example, C and D have a common predecessor, which is activity A. E has a predecessor, which is B. 
Now, what's happening from here on? C and D are predecessors for G. And E is a predecessor for F. The arrows in this graph indicate the relationship between the different activities. We will look at this later in more detail when we are building precedence diagrams and when we are calculating the critical path, the project duration, early start, early finish, and other parameters of a project. So, some new items in this session. You did a great job. I see you in the next session. Bye-bye.